This is Schlockfest. <laughs> Welcome I'm back. Enough. This is John Paul Mantia. And I'm Jenny Morrow. Yeah, uh, he was supposed to introduce her, but he didn't. I got a special guest. Never count on a yeah. man to do a fucking thing. That's right. <laughs> We're horrible because of our dicks. No, that's the only useful thing about you. Oh, okay. <laughs> So we got a special guest today. <laughs> it's uh, Jenny Morrow, who uh, does have a Schlockfest t-shirt. Hey guys, yeah. buy our merch. <laughs> she bought our merchandise. I didn't even do that. <laughs> I didn't even do that. <laughs> buy our merch, dudes. I mean, I made them pay me back for it, but you know. Uh, <laughs> it happens. It happens. But uh, yeah, we have a uh, pretty entertaining episode scheduled, according to uh, Jean-Paul Mantia. Yeah, so today, in honor of Christmas in July... And we are doing Anna in the Apocalypse, a wonderful musical, because yes, last month I failed. I did not torture Randy enough. So this month I decided to bring somebody else who enjoys torturing Randy as much as I do, Jenny. I mean, everybody's got to have a hobby. <laughs> so we are going to uh, give you a quick synopsis of what IMDb says uh, that Anna in the Apocalypse is about. So per IMDb... Anna and the Apocalypse is a zombie apocalypse threatens the sleepy town of Little Haven at Christmas, forcing Anna and her friends to fight, slash, and sing their way to survival, facing the undead in a desperate race to reach their loved ones. But they soon discover that no one is safe in this new world, and with civilization falling apart around them, the only people they can truly rely on are each other. That sounds horrible. And songs. Lots what, of what, songs. That almost sing. made me vomit reading yeah. it, to be honest. <laughs> What are they going to sing? Stop biting me. It's Christmas time. Shoot it in the head. Shoot it in yeah. the head. Shoot it in the head. Oh, I don't know. Is that how you sing? Maybe. Yeah, that's, Maybe. that's the worst song I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> it is. Because shooting things in the head is fun. That's right. It so, is. good old uh, John McFeely. Oh, John McFeely. Uh, directed this wonderful movie. Yeah, he sounds great. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was released <laughs> on December 2nd of 2018. So, folks, this is a new one. It's the first time I think we've done a more current schlock. film schlock with the exception of last month but that doesn't count it was you know crowdfunded uh <laughs> and it, it grossed a whopping seven hundred and fifty six thousand dollars oh man that's a lot of ducats that's a lot of ducats boys and girls <laughs> i can nowhere find on the internet the uh the budget for this movie so yeah but hey randy it'll make you feel better it is certified fresh. It got a 77% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, well, I'm sure that's great then. Yeah. I've never seen a movie that's been certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. That hey, was not the wonderful tagline in this movie? La La Land meets Shaun of the Dead. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Randy's in for a treat, boys and girls. Here we go. We're about to dive into Anna <laughs> in the apocalypse. Huh? Uh, See what I did there? Because yeah, of the dick creepy. thing. Right? Really. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, they probably still can't find the hole. It says, tag <laughs> tagline is, oh, the weather outside is frightful. We'll let you know as soon as we're done watching. Stay tuned. T'was the night before Christmas, and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Young Anna was nestled, all snug in her bed. Not knowing tomorrow, she'd meet the undead. How would she survive what this season would bring? Well, that's simple. She'd stab, she'd slash, and she'd sing. Oh, no. What? Justin Bieber's a zombie. back yeah schlockfest anna and the apocalypse you loved it oh it was terrible um, i mean pretty awful but well, what do you do with your life that you find these movies i'm just you know i'm, I'm afraid for you <laughs> i agree <laughs> how, like how yeah I, let's let's 
start off with that. How did you hear about this? So I heard about this when I first saw the teaser trailer to this movie. And I said, holy shit, that's a zombie movie. And they're singing. And I was like, that looks like it would be a lot of fun. And it was a lot of fun. Now, when you say fun... <laughs> yeah, I, I, th- I have a feeling that your idea of fun and mine differ. Because this was almost tedious. Tedious is yeah. not a word that I understand. Well, first and foremost, uh, the movie starts and they're in a car ride. And right off the bat, it's terribly shot. It looks like a home video camera. Blair Witch? Style. Yeah. It, I mean... Visually, right off the bat, I was like, this looks like hot garbage. Hot garbage? Yeah. Not cold garbage. Well, I could take it before that. I mean, when it started off with the intro, it actually seemed like a bad Hallmark Christmas movie. Yeah, that's right. The music. The, like the romances and stuff that yeah. make you want to vomit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a Christmas movie. It's supposed to be happy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was happy when some of the people died. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> right. But. There were, well, yeah, we will we'll get to that. There is some spoiler, sorry. Spoiler alert if you're interested. <laughs> people we're die gonna, in this movie. Yeah, we're going to be revealing a lot about this movie. A lot of people died. <laughs> it is called Anna and, and the, the Apocalypse. apocalypse. Right. But for those of you who did not look up the word apocalypse and don't know what it means, go ahead and do it now, and you'll realize it's not a spoiler to say that a lot of people died. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. A minute. A P O. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Da, da, da. All right. Okay. Anyways, so, so tell us more about this movie, Randy. All right. Well, so it starts off a uh, car ride. Uh, clearly foreigners. <laughs> foreigners. <laughs> I at first thought they were old, speaking old timey English, and it turns out it was Scottish, I believe. Yes. So their accents are Scottish, I think. We're introduced to Anna, and who we assume is her uh, boyfriend, and they're not; they're just friends. Uh, getting a car ride to school with. Uh, Anna's dad. They're having a conversation. Your normal opening bullshit. You know, blah, blah, blah. Get to school. They get with their clique, you know, yeah. in school. Right off the bat, a song happens. This, this, they, they, I just gotta say, they don't hold back on the singing in this movie. It is a straightforward, every time there's a pause, where our feelings need to be expressed in, through music. <laughs> it's a musical, Randy. Right? So, um, ba- basically, they're in the cafeteria. They're talking amongst themselves. This musical breaks out. Uh, what song was it, Jenny? Do you know? The first or the second one? The first one was before the cafeteria, and that was like, we got to break away and get out of this town kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. The cafeteria right. was, the, we got to make out in the cafeteria because there's no such thing as a Hollywood ending. That's right. There's no such thing as a Hollywood ending because they're all sad. They're teens. And just love isn't what they thought it was. Right. Except for two of them that do think that they're going to have a Hollywood ending. And sort of do. They do, kind of. Yeah, everybody's in love. (laughs) Except for these two kids, they they love each other. But everybody's kind of in love with somebody else. Like, they love somebody and that person loves somebody else. But before all of this, you guys forgot we got the introduction of the villain of this movie. That wasn't a zombie. That was not a zombie. The head Savage. The headmaster. The headmaster, Mr. Savage. Savage. And he does a really good job of being over the top. That's what I want to point out, too, is this movie sets up like the zombies are going to be the main obstacle. Mr. Savage is their main obstacle. Well, and their own stupidity. And their own. Let's not 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 highlight that. But that's a zombie movie. But Mr. Savage, I swear, is such a expressive villain that I think he even did a mustache twirl in it. Yeah. I mean, it was that... He's that got cartoony. this epic beard, and he does kind of stroke it at one point. <laughs> I'm going to tie him up and put him on a railroad track. <laughs> 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 so, John Paul's right. There's a song before um, we meet the musical master, Mr. Savage. Um, Anna's dad is... Because I was wondering why he got out of the car and came in with him to the school. He's the janitor. Yeah, the that's why he drives her to school almost every day. Yeah. Except for that one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, except for that the, faithful day, right, which we'll get to. Which, so you know, our our uh, main characters are in the lunchroom after the song, and or during the song, and they're expressing their how their loves aren't working out. Anna is pining for the the jock, right? 
You know, it's hard to say if she's pining or feeling that regret, regretting having been with the jock. It's, it's the guy's real, a douchebag. Yeah, the female perspective on this is a little different than what we normally have. You're yeah, right. it was more of a, like, uh, oh, I did that. I had a moment. I thought it was the right. And Shame. Turns out he's a douche. Fuck. Yeah. Shame. We've all had that moment. <laughs> she had, Shame. She, you could definitely tell that there was a uh, sexual chemistry that they had had. Right. Yeah. And the guy looks well, like he's 40. I think they flat 40. out said it that she banged him. There was a whole bunch of awkward little... Right. Like, her friend's like, who would ever fuck that? And she's like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, it was it was a fascinating scene of, like, where somebody kept sticking their foot in their mouth and hurting their friend, and their friend kept trying to want to slide into the table. Right. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, our pseudo-boyfriend, he's clearly pining for her, too, you know? He's ducky. He, he's, he's, yeah, this movie's ducky. Uh, actually... You know, though, I like Ducky. Everybody always uses him as a joke, but he was, he literally was, like, not shy about being Ducky. That, you know? that was the good part about Ducky. Now, yeah. the, the complete stalker part, where he, like, would never leave when she told him to, that's a little creepy. Right. But Ducky being himself, right. totally good. But yeah. that was, like, an 80s trope, though, too. It you was, know? yeah, all those movies. It was romantic if they followed you around if everywhere. John Hughes, <laughs> yeah, if John Hughes had one glaring point that's evolved over the years... It's that his male um, heroes, heroes, for lack of a better word, were a little bit creepy. Yeah, and and maybe it was his point to make it like it seemed creepy as an adult looking back on it, and that's how he felt. But I actually think that he was wanting you to sympathize with them. I, and, I agree. I think he did want you. And to if sympathize you try to go back, I watched Sixteen Candles not too long ago. His yeah, his heroes are pretty fucking creepy. Yes. What about in Weird Science? Both of his heroes. Do you think they were creeping? Because they created a woman? I do. I, in <laughs> retrospect. But I don't think that they... Their intentions were creepy, but I don't. I think they learned a lesson yeah. that made them less creepy at the end of the day. I'll get you that. I mean, to be fair, Molly Ringwald has had a lot of like interviews and uh, um, articles that she's written that basically address like all that and conversations she's had to try to work it and some things that she actually did get John Hughes to change that were even worse. Yeah. So... Um, you know, retrospective, there's a lot of things you just didn't think about at the time. You know? Right, he was a man of his time. And, and not that's good and bad. Because right. he gave a voice to, like, I don't know, watching The Breakfast Club as a kid, I was like, man, I fucking I identify with that kid. Yeah, you he, know? he did present a range of characters, which is... Right, He but he took it to a level where it was still acceptable to have 50s, you know, like 50s mentalities on mm -hmm. things, which are... So I'm not saying that this kid was like that and that. That's my whole roundabout back to it. <laughs> this kid this kid isn't pining like Ducky in the sense that he's being creepy. He just wishes things were different. Yeah, I would so. agree. It's more of he's her best friend. He doesn't try to push the envelope any when she says, no, we're friends. He doesn't say, fuck you, I'm going to walk away. Right. He does make her get out of the grocery cart, though. Right, but... <laughs> But in all fairness, in a nice way, though. In a nice way, he's like, "Okay, it's your turn to push the grocery cart." Since, <laughs> but we'll get to that. What? <clears throat> so we haven't even experienced any zombies yet at this part. No, 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 no just no, a lot of music. A lot of music. Awkward teenage. Getting to know you. We have um, in the group. We've got Draco Malfoy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to introduce yeah. Draco Malfoy yeah. and 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 her motivation in life. Right. She is a um, androgynous. Budging journalist. But yeah, exactly. Budding journalist who um, wants. She, she's American transplant to this. Her her parents are clearly not in the picture. They might be military. Nobody really knows, right? No, they said they went off to Mexico. Mexico. They, the pictures they show make it sound like a pleasure trip. So it kind of looks like they're rich parents. Exactly. They left her kid. kid. They don't care about around her Christmas either. to go on a fun trip to Cancun. Or right. Some crazy shit. So and she has a girlfriend, which we find out later. But but she's trying. She doesn't know if she's dead or alive. In the but, which I don't think they ever clear up in the movie. They don't really clear it up. Um, you got the lovebirds who are one's this one's an aspiring singer. Her boyfriend is this kid who's totally into filming, so he he's a journalist as well. Yeah. Or aspiring filmmaker. Aspiring or... filmmaker, right? Um, in the group we have Anna, who's kind of the butt badass, like we said. Um, then we have the ducky. And that's the core group. The douche ex-boyfriend. Well, yeah, the douche ex-boyfriend, but he's got his own group, you know. Yeah. We're just kind of glaring, a little or glazed over, uh, introduced to him. <clears throat> but they're the core group, the Breakfast Club, kind of, right? <laughs> and uh, they're experiencing life as teenagers. That's how, that's how it goes. 
singing, oh, our biggest worry is about this big musical that we're all involved in. Cut to the bowling alley, right? <laughs> There are thunderballs. Thunder, Let's not forget the thunder name balls. Bowling. <laughs> thunderballs. That's an amazing bowling alley. It also yeah. contains a ball pit. It's, I mean, there's just tons of balls. And there's ball balls. Pit. <laughs> balls all over. <laughs> balls are a running theme in this <laughs> movie. Um, it's where Anna and her her little bestie work, and uh, they're cleaning up for the night, right? Because there was a bachelor party. Is yeah. that what that was? Yes. Yeah, it was yeah, a bachelor party. Yeah. I just thought maybe in Scotland, random men dressed as reindeers and went and played at bowling yeah. alleys. I mean. That's what y'all do, right? I right. <laughs> and they're talking about the play, and then the and then the play happens. <laughs> yes. Which gives us, I think, one of the highlights of this movie. I even wrote it down. Our favorite line. Yeah. Um, the art director's yelling. He's like, "Where is my magician?" <laughs> you know, and then getting things ready. But the the two uh, penguins, right? Yes. And I think you had a. Oh yeah, the, their first line for their song. Yeah. My favorite dish is fish, mother flipper, in a rap voice. Yeah. I can't do it. It was my a lovely... favorite dish is fish, mother flipper. Thank you. Yes, right. And, the, and then they you. twerk. Yeah, yes. and they kind of twerk. Uh, it, it's worth YouTubing that clip. My favorite dish is fish, mother flipper. And it's a funny song. And it it's is. a funny song. And the penguins are adorable. The penguins crack me up. So th that was probably the highlight of this for me. It made me laugh really hard. Um, so the play goes on. We see the talent <laughs> revealed in this of our uh, uh, two lovebirds, right? Um, she sings this amazing song, and uh, I think he was not there. That he wasn't empty there. chair they kept showing was him not being there. Yeah, he, he never explained why he wasn't there. Apparently, we find out in exposition later, him and the other girl were trapped in the bowling alley. But well, they, no, they went to film the soup kitchen. Oh, remember? that's right. And Thank that's you. why he wasn't there, because they got trapped. Ah. But she sings this song, and it's like kind of like reminiscent of Santa Baby, but it's its own thing. But and worse. The, yeah, and these freaking uh, dudes come out in the background to dance, and they're like shirtless, writhing High on school can chip and nail kind candy of. canes. It reminded me of Mean Girls. It means nothing I, to me. Actually, I've never watched Mean Girls. Never so. seen it as well. So. Well, it, it, instead of uh, the girls dancing in, like, something similar to that it was dudes i did appreciate yeah. the male exploitation i thought that was funny although they were way too young but <laughs> I, well yeah i kind of like and, and actually yeah, i just appreciated the flip i'm, I'm gonna go with you on that because yeah in, in any high school movie they would have had you know women dancing yeah, even if they were 17 thing. or 18 years mm -hmm. old so it was a flip on that a play on that trope so that was kind of clever, I guess. I see what that, that you know. You enjoyed it, don't mind, Randy. Uh, I, I literally <laughs> was like, I don't think you're allowed to do this. <laughs> in Scotland, you can it do whatever you want. Like. Okay. Yeah, private school, where everybody was dressed like it was their first day at Gryffindor. Oh, well. Which caused our villain, the headmaster, to talk about yeah. salacious. Yeah, he was like, disgusting, this, vulgar. This salacious and vulgar. I will never work with her again. He storms off. And uh, that's where we hear a little zombie stuff going on outside. Right? He'll knock yeah. on the door. He'll knock on the door. He opens the door. Nothing's there. But when he closes the door, blood streaks. Yeah, there are blood streaks on the door. Very uh, reminiscent of Shaun of the Dead. I want to stop right here. They stole a lot of stuff from other zombie movies. And by stole, again, it means homage. Yeah. You can keep saying that word in French, whatever. Homage. Stole it. <laughs> stole it. it, it. <laughs> they stole it. <laughs> How about they borrowed? Well, I, don't I don't think they asked. So they just yeah. out used it. You can't actually give it back mm. at that point. They just took it and made it theirs. So that's fine, I guess. It's not a big deal, you know. Um, I mean, it, Walking Dead does it on a weekly basis. It, and is Anna, it says Anna is Ella Hunt. Is that... Uh, that's, that's the actress's name, yes. Okay. Is she related to anybody? Because I keep saying she looks like Drew Barrymore's doppelganger. Yeah, which I didn't see at first because she's a much skinnier version. But um, yeah. when she would move her face around, you could actually see a lot of yeah. resemblance. So it was very weird to me because I watch um, on on uh, Netflix. Because you watch Drew Barrymore a lot. Well, yeah, I watch <laughs> the show that she's on Netflix. Um, um, Santa Clarita Diet. Yeah, and she, excellent series. By the very way. great series, but she does those same facial expressions. She does, really yeah. According to the IMDb, yeah, her mother is a sculptor. Oh. And a former actress herself, but not Drew Barrymore. If I and her father is an art dealer. Okay. Well, if I can say that there's a high point for me is I actually liked Anna, you know, too. She wasn't. 
a great singer, I don't think. And I, I hope that doesn't offend her if she ever saw this video. I highly doubt she will. She's going to be so pissed but at you. I thought she was very good. I mean, but anyway, so the, the story now picks up a little bit more of a pace. They have their play. People give a standing ovation at the end of the song. And Grandma comes in. Grandma, we were introduced to uh, Nick, the boyfriend of the singer. Um, her grandma, the, his grandma. Anyways, uh, Chris, actually. Chris, is Chris that's oh, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Nick was the, the judge. Is the douche, yeah. yeah. So Chris, his grandma. She's a very neat lady, I guess. I she was applauding the little Santa's dancing. She yeah. enjoyed it very much. She was like, oh my, oh. those boys were very good. <laughs> yeah, boys. Yeah. Anyway, oh, yeah. So then it cuts to the next day where they blatantly rip off Shaun of the Dead. Blatantly. <laughs> and well, oh, well, you missed some good parts. You oh, know, I know. Where okay. You actually kind of get an intro to where Anna might be a little bit of a badass. Okay. So they're closing down the bowling alley after That's their right. you know shift is over. And, oh no, there's a pair of rental shoes in the middle of the floor. The cleaning lady's a little pissed. She gives Anna a look. Anna gets a smile. She grabs, I, I forgot what it was, some kind of thing to use. Um, Cricket. Broom, a cricket it, was like a, it was cricket bat, oh, I believe. And uh, she hits one of the shoes and boom, gets it right into the shoe bin. Yep. Um, followed by her her ducky, her yep. version of ducky. He goes, he's like, watch this. And he covers his face to do it. And he hits the shoe and knocks it right into the cleaning woman's head. And I just bring this up because it's a point later. <laughs> she, of course, gets knocked out for a minute. But um, you saw from Anna that she's got aim and skills and, and thought with, like, right. hitting that, things. She's which badass. comes into play later. Yep. Which then proceeds with, you know, afterwards, them walking home from work, and it, they end up laying in the snow, sort of making snow angels. I totally forgot that whole scene, yeah. They, talking about how she wants to go to Australia, and how she was a little disappointed that her best friend didn't really seem to have her back on that. And, right. You know, so he finally pops up with, no, I got your back, I'm going to go start running to school every day, so I get ready so we can go hike the out, um, out back together. And then it fades to black, and then that's what yeah. we did the next morning. That's right. Which yeah. is confusing. The next morning. morning, she's getting dressed. Uh, she's in a penguin onesie. Adorable penguin onesie. Yeah. I'm super jealous. She eats a little piece of candy. We see it's December 23rd on a calendar. Advent calendar, Advent yes. calendar. Um, then it cuts to her putting her shoes on, and she puts her earbuds in, and it's Shaun of the Dead. Like, shit's going crazy. But she's singing, because, you know, why not? It's a happy morning! Yeah. Yeah. So this is where it's doop, 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 doop. She's singing about it being like an amazing, wonderful new day. Right. Like she was all depressed the day before. Suddenly, for no reason that we can tell, she's super happy and things are going to go better. In retrospect now, do you think it's because her best friend said he was going to hike with her? It could have been. I thought maybe they like, had sex and it was actually great, which I could not believe that would be the case, right. judging by everything else that happened in that movie. Hey, not Malcolm. That sex, she's making fun of been. you, Malcolm right. Cummings. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so i mean it could have been that they were happy they talked it out and they're good friends again they were yeah they were back on the same page and because he was just as happy he put his earbuds on and, and same thing oblivious to what was going on they're singing across great new day town, skipping running. jumping shit the is zombies. going nuts in the background babies being eaten out of carriages they're seeing none of it yeah they don't see anything it yeah. was very much like shot of the dead when he went to go get his uh yeah ice cream or whatever his, it was well, no, his morning well, you know what yeah. actually remind me a little more of um, the remake of Dawn of the Dead when she the little girl comes out when she first goes outside I mean she wasn't oblivious to it right. that, but the, the kind of chaos that was happening was that level whereas Shaun of the Dead chaos was just like maybe one or two wandering zombies it was very slow like, yeah. it was easy that you could have missed it if you weren't you're right attention. this is more of uh, Zack Snyder like shit was going houses were on fire people were running, running into and, things cars yeah. crashing into each other so it was and, that, and that's where I will give my next props to this movie visually Still looks kind of shitty, but special effects are nuts in this part. Yeah, yeah. like it's like a ton great of money. makeup. Yeah, great zombie makeup. Uh, bl the blood is insane looking. It looks great. They love the blood splatter. Yeah, in this movie. it was cheesy and wonderful. Yeah, it was a way. very big nod to Romero. I yeah, mean, very bright colored blood. He he is the grandfather. But they run into each other. Into they, I guess they probably did this every day. But they stop in the cemetery. Right. Yeah. Well, which, well, that was the funny part. So it yeah. seemed like the dad drove him to work every day, or right. to work to school. Sorry. And here's the day. Like it didn't seem weird to them that there was no father taking them to right. school. Right. They're just running. Well, the I I also think so. Before she did get up late because they she showed did. her kind of frantic that it was eight thirty in the morning. She's like, oh no. Right. But why would he have been late? Yeah. But why wouldn't her father? Again, like, get because your ass we don't up? know <laughs> whether they had sex or not. 
Well, but again, so she's up late. If her and her father normally go to school together, you'd think her dad would have been like, hey, wake up, stupid. You know, like yeah. your dad. <laughs> right. Yeah, my dad would have been like, get up, stupid. What are you doing? You're late for school. So, I mean, that whole part's kind of like odd, but, you know, it's an apocalypse musical. It's right. Zombie, so I guess, you And know. this is where they find somebody in a, in a penguin suit. No, no, snowman. Snowman, that's right. God, there's too many suits in this. And they think in the cemetery. In the cemetery, they think he's hurt. They get him up, and we see the zombie full on. Yeah, zombie face in the snowman suit. She lures him over to this little like playground area, and hits him with a seesaw. In Which the was amazing. Yeah, he pops the head off with off. the snowman part of it still on though, because otherwise it wouldn't be as funny. Right, spraying straight up in the air, crazy looking, and uh, yeah, from there that's what we get is. Uh, them dis- dissecting what's going on. There's no cell service now. But there's Wi-Fi. There's Wi-Fi. Very important to note that. That's right. Um, they're trying to decide where to go. Why not go to the bowling alley? The Winchester. I mean, yeah. Thunderballs. The Thunderballs. Have the a Winchester. <laughs> they get there. And, Wait till uh, everything blows over. Yeah, they get there and our uh, one of our starstruck lovers is there with... Uh, Malfoy. Malfoy. And they're like, oh my god, I'm glad to see you. They kind of run, you know, run through what's going on. And uh, it's zombie apocalypse. It's yeah, I mean, because they go through and and what I said would, would actually be true right now. So they go on the internet and they look at people who are posting zombie selfies. Yeah. Which, which would is so would happen. Yeah. Look at me in a zombie! <laughs> Come on, Randy, you would. You'd oh, I like, totally would. Hashtag zombie kill of the day. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Hashtag. Actually, that's what I would do, the zombie yeah. kill of the day, because that's my... <laughs> yeah. Hashtag, look at this one die. So, now they know they're zombies. Um, they they discover the the cleaning lady in the bathroom. Oh, oh but for... Sorry, just no, bring that something you brought up. Like, yeah. So, right after they kill the first zombie, Anna and her buddy, Ducky. Ducky's like, it's zombies, and Anna's like, no. That's stupid. It can't be zombies. Right. So Randy brings up a good point. How do you, how do you argue that at that point? <laughs> right. There's a zombie head literally writhing on the ground next to ah, him. He's ah, like, oh, ah, that can't be it. Ah, Clearly is. I mean, there's no need to be weird about it. It's it. it there's a zombie apocalypse happening. But yeah. So now they know they're still, they're trapped in the bowling alley. I mean, at this point, and then they go to the bathroom to, to girl talk it up. Because <laughs> that's what you do when you have nothing else. That's you right. have to go girl in the bathroom to girl talk. Yeah. You can't have girl talk in front of the two dudes. I don't understand that. You know, but they I hear know. a little <laughs> fart noise. And they, they open, yeah, they open the door, and there's the cleaning lady, who is, of course, a zombie. Yep, and she tries to attack him, as you would assume. Because you know, like normal people, if I had a zombie try to come out of the stall, I mean, I'd have just shut the stall door. Right. Apparently, it was a hindrance to her before. Ah. It might still be. I'd have tried that. Yeah, <laughs> she didn't even try. Attacks them. Uh, Malfoy goes ape shit. Yeah, they toilet kick her back lid. into the stall. Yeah, yeah, toilet lid, killing her. They call that a swirly. Yeah. <laughs> you they had a much more violent school than I did. Yeah. I did. I, I did. And I grew up in Youngstown, so I don't know where the fuck you're from, but damn. <laughs> they pushed me in the toilet and turned it on and went. Well, that's a swirly. That's right. swirly. Bashing your head in with the toilet lid right. is not a swirly. No. It's destroying it. <laughs> So uh, that happens, and then all of a sudden these zombies break through the wall, which was crazy. To me. It was pretty cool, though. It was With cool. reindeer hats. Right, you know. they all had reindeer hats on. It was the bachelor party from the night before. Yep. But, you know, I liked the reindeer hats. <laughs> it amused me. I just thought it was funny. It was pretty funny. And then... Oh, we forgot about the ball pit, though. Right. The random scenes in the ball pit. Right. I didn't understand There's that. a little kid's ball pit, and they keep going in there and hanging out. Yeah, right? it's a plastic pool filled with the little balls. Right. And it some point it's the two guys in there but one of them is always hiding in the balls right there's and a lot of balls smiling a lot and just, then the other one pops up out of the ball i mean it's just it's it seemed to be their little go-to comfort to, zone to comfort zone yeah <laughs> but uh they this is where the girls flip it and they finally show yeah the girls so kicking ass so. already we've been introduced to the girls as the badass the first two zombie kills that we see are the women that do it there was right. malfoy with the toilet lid there was anna with the seesaw and um, first, when they run out, though, into the main alley, and the boys are fighting, too, suddenly the girls now can't fight for about five yeah, seconds, ten not, seconds. Yeah, like a, it's, it is enough to go, what? What the, the hell just happened to you guys? Jenny <laughs> pointed out, like, hey, these two were great, and now all of a sudden they can't fight? But it does flip around. They, they yeah. pick up, and it comes to you know equal 
head bashing on the zombies and they get much better. So right. it, it was. It, and they I have a cool the zombie kill that they chopped. Spatula? The, the, no, no, that's spatula. The spatula bashed them in with the bone. That was a good one, but the. the There's several good ones. But yeah. the, the, the zombie head goes through, makes a strike, and then it comes out <laughs> right. through the return. Yeah. I did like the. Bowling balls crushing the head looked visually like, whoa, that looked great. That was a good kill. It was a good smash, yeah. So that was cool. Um, yeah, so they kill off all the zombies in the alley. Yeah, and it looked great. Like, again, mm -hmm. that, the kills. special effects are nuts in this. Very well done. Then they find out they have to go to the school because that's where the shelter is. Right. They get Wi-Fi, like Jenny said. And then next thing you know, they're like, well, our plan is to go to the school. And then our, our lover boy interest, not Ducky, but the one who whose girlfriend was the singer that he was not at the school for, Yeah, comes up with what he calls a genius plan to be able to get to the school. Right. Which, so straight out of Scooby-Doo. Do go. <laughs> well, I was going to say, so so then, though, it cuts to the school. Mm -hmm. And we've got director... Uh, headmaster. Headmaster. Headmaster Savage. Savage. And he's like, nobody can leave. We all have to stay here. I am the headmaster. I'm the headmaster. He says that like five times. And uh, finally, people are like, look, dude, fuck off. We're going to go get out of here. Nobody's coming for us. The military has failed. Yeah, badly. They were all zombified, apparently. Right. You never there, even heard of shots. There was a, bombs, but no yeah, shots fired. There was a whole song about that, too. Like, they're watching these lights flash like bombs are going off, and they're like, our world is over. <laughs> so, but yeah, so then uh, our... our uh, um, talented journalist who's in love with the, the singer, his bright idea was to put the ball pit over everybody like a raincoat. <laughs> or a boat, or like a, boat. a canoe trying yeah. to hide around, you know, and you just see legs in a plastic pool. Yeah, and their Scooby-Doo is very reminiscent of Scooby-Doo. Bum, bum, yeah. bum, 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 bum. Like, They're Why walking is around these helpful? zombies down this, I, I like a highway, I guess? Or an alley out of the road something. And then they see some zombies. Yeah, and so they duck down, and the zombie sits on Malfoy and pisses. <laughs> but it's not, it's, they're in the, the rubber thing. So. I will not admit, this is the anywhere. first zombie piss that there's ever been in any zombie movie well, I, mean, I can think of. Yeah. In theory, you would think their body, bodily functions would stop after a point because they're dead, but there yeah. would be a period of evacuation. That's maybe. true. But I would, would it still be warm, though? Probably not. Because that's, that's what she said. Unless she just became a zombie. Right. I don't know. These were old zombies, too. They were yeah, old, they were old old folks. elderly. So yeah, yeah. they're trying to decide how to get out of this pickle. Meanwhile, there's a zombie crawling on the ground with no legs. Yeah. That has seen them, and now they're, you know, is trying to lift the pole up off the ground. Right. It is a one of those moments where you're like, I think some people are going to die here. And they should. And then all should. of a sudden, it's <laughs> da 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 da. You know, noises, noises splashing, blood splatter. Blood splatter. And then the pool's flipped over violently. And who is it? Enter the douche. Nick. The douche Played by Ben Wiggins. <laughs> ben Wiggins. That's you know, excellent. You know Ben Wiggins <laughs> from other feature films, right? Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I assume he came off The Simpsons. I don't know. But he does this song. And what is it, Jean-Paul? I forget the song. Hero? Soldier? Oh, that's right. The, the Warriors come out to play. Warriors come out to play, almost yeah. like uh, the Eye of the Tiger song. Yeah, it's uh, I put singing D bag killing zombies. That's that's. It's a very epic. He was singing this song, song about how he kills zombies, and that's what he does now. And so he leads them out of the hall, out of the uh, little hall hallway. I keep saying hallway. It's a alley. alleyway, I guess. That yeah, they, they were looting a store. Him and his cronies. Right, him and his cronies. They're, they get to the school, right? Yes, after, of course. Well, no. so they, they lose people on the way, if you remember. Yeah. So, you know, Douchebag and his buddies are now, we'll, sort, you know, we'll save you, girls get behind us, right. you know, classic. <laughs> and they die. They get, Well, they get to the Christmas tree. So, right, because right. they have to cut through the Christmas tree farm. Yeah, to get there. Which is a bad plan. It's a terrible plan. It's, it's a dark, plan. you can't see shit. There's Christmas trees everywhere, which gives us our first jump scare of the movie, which is the... Uh, <laughs> The, the Mrs. Santa with the red eyes that yeah. pops out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, well, A, who invented this? A why? And, and I, I want it? one. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny wants to buy it for her lawn. I mean, <laughs> I was thinking cool. so my neighbor could see it. If people know my one neighbor, they'll appreciate that. Yeah. That should be facing the privacy fence, which she keeps taking boards like, off of. Ha ha! <laughs> 
But they're trying to make their way through. They get separated, Scooby Doo style. style. Um, this is where some people die, right? Yep. Uh, we get. Douchebag loses all his cronies. Yep, all his cronies get killed. Uh, the Anna steps up again, badass Anna, gets a candy cane with that's a got a point on it. Candy cane Giant steak. With, you know, and she's kicking ass with it. Uh, our main character, or Nick, he has the, uh, our main bad girl. Yeah, our, our new hero. New hero, villain, redeemed. Mm-hmm. He's got a baseball bat and he's taking care of business. But we lose Ducky. We lose Not Ducky. Not quite yet. Well, we lose... Well, they get, they get through the forest. Through the forest. And Malfoy it, saves Loverboy. Right. This, the, the virgin thermographer. Yep. Who drops his phone at one point and stupidly does the white boy thing to go save right. the phone and risks getting bit by the zombie. I actually love that she calls him out here. She's like, why the fuck did you try to grab that? It's nothing but plastic <laughs> and glass. And then we find Chris is a true romantic. He's a romantic. It's pictures of his grandma right. and his girlfriend, Lisa. And it's pictures of Nana and my girlfriend, Lisa. Still stupid as fuck, but you know, whatever. You know? So you're like, okay. And then uh, we now, get, yeah, now we're, we're in through. In a mall, kind of? To this like, little mall area that's going to connect. And yeah, there's and a zombie still horde. Separated somehow. Yeah, they're still separated. There's a zombie horde, and uh, well, Anna had told, you know, Ducky that before this. Remember that they're that, that they're just friends. They're never going to be more than friends. So he's sit, standing there, and he's he gets bit. Right. Well, they're talking normally. This yeah. is nothing to do with the just friends thing. They're continuing yeah. a conversation about the names of the reindeer. Right. And yeah. he's. Flings his hand out in, I don't know, yep. joy of naming all the, the reindeers, right. and a zombie bites him right on the hand. Right on the top of the hand. He knows he's done for. She's, like, ready to fight to the death, and he just grabs her up, yep. rolls her through the zombies. Operation right. Human Shield. Because, yeah. of course, meanwhile, a horde of zombies had come in. There wasn't yeah. just the one. There was right, the one was that snuck up, and then a bunch more came forward, mm-hmm. and they were trapped in a doorway. <laughs> he throws her through. And it gets Romero'd, as John yeah. Paul pointed out. I, I mean, it was it was a great homage to Romero yeah. with the whole day. Is it Day of the Dead? I think it was Any day, of them. Day, day of the, the Dead, Dawn of the Dead. dead. Uh, he yeah, has literally, he just one of them. grabs yeah. the body parts and just... Yep. And then it... Land of the Dead, I think it was, yeah. too. Rolls to her. She starts fucking just terminatoring these zombies. They get out. Yeah. Well, which my one thing is, if you know you're going to die, do you just sit there and let things eat you, or do you see how many you take? I, like, I agree with you. I would have tried to take a few out with me. But they decide they're going to die, and this is almost every zombie movie. Once they decide they die, they're just going to be like, oh, I'm just going to lay here and let it tear me apart. It'll be fine. I always think That of shit hurts, Ni- doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. I always think of Niles Dyson from Terminator 2. Uh, He's sitting there with that thing. <laughs> That's how I would be. I would be fighting until every breath, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're done. All right, sorry, but yes. Yeah, but so anyway, so they get through all of it. They get to the school. They link back up with uh, old girl and. Yeah, well, so okay, they get to the school and yeah. it's now douchebag ex boyfriend, redeemable hero, supposedly. Right. Anna the badass, Malfoy the badass, and Chris the lover boy. Right. They get in the front door and guess who they find? <laughs> it is uh, Headmaster, Headmaster Savage, Savage having his Christmas dinner. He's eating beans, pork and beans, and he's like, I imagine you want to see your parents. They almost left. <laughs> Lucky you, they're still here. Yeah. <laughs> Twill mustache. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's very, very. And I'm like, don't maniacal laugh. Don't believe that, dude. But <laughs> yeah, and then they're like, okay, where's our family? You know, like, right there's nothing wrong. Doors. <laughs> so of course he locks them in the cafeteria with a whole bunch with of zombies. With a whole horde of zombies, blows a whistle, then sings this diabolical song, which is amazing. It was like a lovely villain song. <laughs> yeah, and he was very expressive. I am the villain. villain. Yeah. I kick some ass. I'll trap you what all. Did he say, so uh, fuck you. He said something like. He goes, he whistles, he goes, pudding. Yes. And then, you know, like, these zombies come out of the woodwork, they fight their way through to another door. Now, at this point, we're very unclear whether or not that is their families that somehow got zombified or what, but they do clear that up later. Right. You're not sure, that, but they get through, and uh, he has run away, you know, savage. He's run away further into the school. <laughs> to continue his villainy. The, uh, his evil plot. His yeah. Plot. Malfoy goes, listen, I'm going to go get my car keys from this place where they confiscate everything. It's, it's, it's the, Savage's office. Savage's office, office. Savage's yeah. office, yeah. And uh, so... They tell Anna to find her dad, who's the janitor at the school. So right. He should be there somewhere. The journalist kid goes with Malfoy, and they unlock this door and find his girl. 
and they have this beautiful moment where they reunite, but he finds out that his grandma has passed away. She died peacefully. But she of died heart exactly like Jenny pointed out. She was going to have a horrible time of it anyway. <laughs> it's unlikely she was going to make it unscathed through the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. So she's going to broke go. a hip. Yeah. <laughs> so she might as well be a nice heart attack. She had a peaceful heart attack in a clo- broom closet. She. We didn't see it. We didn't Let's see hope it. it was peaceful. With Lisa lovingly tending to her. Right. So Lisa, you know, the the singer, they have this amazing moment. Malfoy goes to get the car keys. They're playing. Uh, they see that it's like a room full of zombies. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Malfoy has to traverse through a room full of zombies to get to the headmaster's office. Right. And so she does a decent job of sneaking at first, and she does get there right. uh, for a couple reasons. One, the zombies get distracted by shiny tinsel and stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. So she gets to the tinsel. office, and she's getting the things. Right. And right now everything's fine until she comes across. Oh yeah, a, a vibrator. Pink vibrator, a pink vibrator, which we couldn't figure out why somebody would bring that. To and the it was school. a big vibrator too. Yeah, it was like it was a massive dong. But what was funny Brr. to me is like she looked confused by what a vibrator is. Right. And it would seem strange to me that a you know teenage lesbian who has no idea what a vibrator is. I mean, one to be a teenage female that doesn't know what a vibrator <laughs> is to begin with. One, it just seemed very odd on several levels. Right. And somehow she manages to turn it on when she picks it up, and then she throws it like in shock. Like, oh, ah! yeah. oh my god! And there's all these, these zombies. Noise. Yeah. And yeah, now that it draws the zombies to the door, so she's effectively trapped. Right. And so now our our, our lovers, our Hollywood ending lovers. They, f- they have an idea to plug up his camera to this TV and it'll distract the zombies. And it does for a while. Mm-hmm. But then low battery. L- low battery is a massive killer. It is. It will kill you. Low it has battery. killed our podcast several times. <laughs> In a vibrator, it's just upsetting yeah. too. I mean, that's right. goes out into the a, wrong moment. It's bad. <laughs> it is a killer <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. But in this, it stops the TV, the zombies... Well, it makes a loud noise. Right. Stops the TV and the, the distraction yeah. is now over. Right, and the zombies come at them. Our lovers get bitten. They fight the zombies off. They get they see Malfoy in the distance, and they're like, "Best of luck." And they hug and love and they on hug each it other out, until and they are like, "Wow, that's very uh, romantic." They're gonna die together. The undead yeah. for the rest of their lives. <laughs> it's basically. <laughs> That forever doesn't make a lot of sense, does until it? Until they die of starvation. Or whatever. Or right. You get their heads knocked off by somebody. By somebody else later. Who knows? But, uh, so that happened. And that was crazy to me. I'm like, oh, there goes two more. Two more of our little group down. So now we got Malfoy, yeah. Douchebag X, and Anna herself. Cuts to uh, Anna and, and, douchebag. and Douchebag. And they... Um, We're well, not even in dire straits, really. They're, so Anna and yeah. Douchebag are looking for her father. Right. They end up in a place, uh, I don't like know, wood like a shop. storage, wood shop, something like that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a couple zombies start slowly coming in from a doorway. And douchebag's like, I did love you after we fucked. <laughs> I swear. I'll show you. I'm a good guy. And he pushes her down, and she goes running off, and he's, like, drawing the zombies. And he's singing his song from earlier, really? hitting this bat on this thing. But you're right. It wasn't like... They couldn't have ran out together, right? Yeah, or they could have just started killing the zombies as soon as they were in yeah. a funnel, and you know what I mean? They were like in a straight yeah. line, just knock off head, knock off head. Jean knock Paul, off head. though, I want to point out, I know he's being a little quiet. He fucking loved this movie. I love this movie. <laughs> he was singing along with the songs, dancing, he did, a little dance. he did his own penguin dance. It was lovely. It was something else to see. It's a wonderful It song. was yeah. more enjoyable than the movie. Yeah. So he's, <laughs> I, I, that's why he's being quiet. I just want everybody to know this. He fucking loved it. I love this movie. This was this was right up his alley. It didn't keep Emmett's attention, though. Yeah, em, Emmett, Emmett's doing what he's doing. But <laughs> he don't we're get getting book. close to the end here, just so everybody knows. So bear with us. Bear with us. Anna goes and finds her dad. Turns out he's being held captive by... Headmaster, Headmaster Savage. Savage. Headmaster Savage. Like, fight your way through the zombies and puts his leg up all weird. It is. The Should little high count step, Olaf? yeah. Orloff from the count, yeah. Olaf of, from uh, very, very, very lemony snickets looking at this point. So, anyways, the she fights her way through the zombies. There's a song he's singing. There's a song she's singing. It's lovely. They get up on the stage. She unties Dad, which seemed very conveniently easy. Yeah, he's tied up with garland and Christmas yeah. lights. Dad fights uh, Count Olaf. <laughs> Who he out like Dad outweighs Count Olaf by yeah. 150 pounds. You think one punch would have knocked this motherfucker? Out. It should have. It's like if Mike I don't Tyson know how he tied up yeah. Dad in the first place. Exactly. He, he must have hit him from behind or something. I got nothing. So he finally he shows him mercy because he's holding him over where the zombies are. 
like over the stage and he goes please and he lets him go turns around and and of course savage tries to clunk him again and anna goes dad look out and she an hits, earlier thing from the movie yeah. yeah she hits this star and it comes flying out like a tree topper right yeah and it knocks the guy off into the zombie so he gets a crowd, crowd surf for a good few minutes before they decide to eat him as he yeah finishes his song and gets eaten Dad reveals that he's been bitten on the leg, which the whole time we can't figure out if that happened while he was fighting. I think it happened while he was fighting. Or, it would make more sense if it yeah. was while he was fighting. Because if not, he could have just ended this whole thing by going, I've been bitten, run away. Right. Comment he's, below when, when you uh, see this movie. Because you all yeah. need to see this movie. Yeah. I mean, you know, I suggest you involve alcohol I, and friends to mock it. Right. But sure, see it. Or uh, if you're into the marijuanicus. <laughs> Edibles, maybe, whatever is your thing. Yeah, maybe do toke it. it up a bit first. It'll be a lot more amusing now. Because if I was toked up, I think I might have enjoyed this a little bit more, but I wasn't. So It gives me paranoia. I'm, so I would I'm just hungry look at and had a monster energy. Turn into zombies, monster. it would be bad. But yeah. It, <laughs> I will so, stab you with a pen in the head. <laughs> so uh, Nick shows up. Because of course, D -bag, he lives. douchebags never die. And she goes, Dad, should I kill you? And he, and Nick goes, don't, because I killed my dad. And it was yeah, there was a touching scene yeah. earlier where Nick reveals that he's not yeah. always a selfish asshole. Because <laughs> so, he killed his father when his father asked his him. His father asked him to kill him. So <laughs> so they're like, don't. And they just leave old uh, heavy set dad to die. Die alone. Turn into a zombie. They run out into the alley behind the school. And they're surrounded by zombies. And oh, no, what will they do? Song time. And snow comes down. Snow comes down. They're like, this is the end. Beautiful friends, the end. You know, well, meanwhile, time. the zombies are like crawling on yeah. fences and not really doing anything. So they could actually probably killed several. Right, but they didn't. But they don't. They just, you know, on the ground, seeming emotional. Nick's like, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, boom! Dun -dun. Malfoy. Draco Malfoy shows up, lesbian Malfoy, and he. If she, she goes, it, whatever. whatever. I don't know how she identifies. I don't right. know. They, yeah. I don't they, know. And they. I don't know their pronoun. So they show up. But, uh, yeah, it saves the day, and she goes, saved you fuckers. And yep. I thought it was really cool. And they got in the car, and they're driving off. And that's kind of and it. And that's how it ends, because they, they go, where to next? And, and nobody answers. They, they just drive off, and just of course. kind of plays over, this isn't a Hollywood ending. Mm -hmm. the and then you get one cool little fun jump scare with I would Santa call Zombie. Jump scare. Yes. They have a banner that goes, and they move the banner. And banner Santa flickles zombie. down. Boom. So that's how it ended. Uh... Did I so like it this might movie? Be the sequel. Yeah, did I like this movie? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Like it was amazing. Movie. I hated almost everything about it. I have won and successfully I never will understand broke him nuts. why they need to do so, like every time a song happens, they have to do it right when it's an emotion. It's just it's it it's off putting to me. More than a um, feeling. Well, that and they always got to do the same thing, like the lineup. Well, yeah. they're all gazing emotively out into space yeah. at a doorway. Nothing important. The, I don't you, know what you guys are talking the, about. The highlight of the film was that you could tell the budget went to the special effects, and it was fantastic. Creative kills. Creative kills. Um, women being badasses. I'm always a fan of Yeah, that. women being badasses. Jenny seems to uh, like that. I like when you know the dude comes in and saves the day. That's what we're supposed to do. They never do, though. Because of our In dicks. reality. Because <laughs> of our never. big old sloppy dicks. Girls learn to fight on your own, please. Don't <laughs> So, anyway. Girls depend on our dicks to save you. So, I, I <laughs> believe this was Rip a one successful off, movie. With it. <laughs> so, um, success for me. It was a success for Jean-Paul. Because I failed last month. Last month, he redeemed himself this month. I was miserable through most of it. Except for... I laughed because we, we had a running commentary, which was fun. I liked making fun of it. I, yeah. I enjoyed the shit out of that. Guys, get this movie. Anna vs. the Apocalypse. Your Find thoughts? It. Drop them in the comments below. Uh, you Buy the soundtrack. Su suggestions <laughs> uh, for, for next time? Drop I feel them like in we the need to play below. that song for yeah. them. <laughs> um, uh, next time, though, we are doing uh, the, the Thai poll. Uh, when we did our poll last month, Oh, wait, wait, what is the, who's yeah. tie pole? Yeah, what's tie pole? There was a there was <laughs> right. a tie. John Ball, I didn't yeah. know that about the two. And, and we're uh, not tying our poles together. No, we're not. <laughs> Don't they usually call we're that We're gonna do yeah. <laughs> the classic. My boyfriend's back. Ah. it's another zombie movie, mm -hmm. and it is. I kind of remember that one from my youth. One of like, the first late night zombie yeah. comedy movies. I do vaguely remember it, and I think I liked it, though, as a kid. I don't think you like it. Okay. I probably did as a kid, too. But Jack Black is in it, so well, that's always that? good. I like Jack Black. And uh, Matthew Fox. Did you Fox. see Run, Ronnie, Run? 
Yes. Yes. I like Jack Black in that. It's kind of yeah. weird. Run, Ronnie, Run is fantastic. That's a movie you should be watching. Don't fucking watch this. <laughs> but anyways, run, uh, run. the kick to the cut. Um, <laughs> I, I want to thank ass fat kid. I want to thank Jenny ass. for uh, enduring this with us. Yeah. Thanks, Jenny. And thanks for buying our shirt. Oh, you know, yeah, it yeah. looks good on my table. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> product guys, buy our shirts. They'll look good on your tits. I actually, I actually want that to be on the website. <laughs> Ladies, it'll look good on your tits. Mm-hmm. Schlockfest. Or, guys, they'll look good on my tits. Yeah. And by the way, yes, this is what feminists say. That's right. <laughs> In case Fem- you wondered, yes, we say shit like this. Feminists. <laughs> Such a hard word for him. Feminists. But uh, from here from Schlockfest, this is John Paul Mantia. I've been Ray McGuff. Special thanks again to Jenny Morrow. <laughs> you can check her out at Sacred Sh- Sacred Shimmy Dance Studios. Uh, Sacred Shimmy Belly Dance. Yep. Yes. And uh, you should check out their website. Right? I believe they do have a website. Right? Um, Facebook page and website. Sacred yeah. Shimmy Belly Dance. Um, Facebook is Sacred Shimmy Studios. Right. We uh, we enjoy them. They're all very very lovely and talented ladies. They're all very nice. Um, you should check out one of their. We also have a talented uh, gentleman who's a musician in the troupe as well. So. <laughs> um. Yeah. I, I don't think Randy I, pays attention. I don't think I've ever seen him. <laughs> the guy he in the back plays with the, the drum. drum. Oh, the drum guy. I like him. <laughs> he plays yes. drums. Tip my hat to the drum guy. I like him. He's a good dude. Um, but yeah, so check out their stuff. They're they're really amazing. If you're ever in Columbus, you should uh, schedule a visit when they're doing their thing. It's really neat. Um, again, uh, this you can check out all of our previous shows on uh, Zombie Takeover TV. We're on Stitcher now as well. Ooh, Stitcher, right? Yeah, so... Uh, Spotify. Spotify, I, iTunes, uh, YouTube as well. Zombie Takeover mm-hmm. TV. Pigeon Carrier. Schlockfest. Check out all of our podcasts and what we do. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Uh, stay tuned. Did I fail to mention your attentions now? Victory. All my life they told me I would never succeed. Put me down, controlled me, made me follow their lead. Bought the lies they sold me for too long, but now I'm finally free. (laughs) Nothing's gonna stop me now. Nothing's gonna stop me now. It took me time to blossom, I know. But I'm all fired up and I'm ready to go. Nothing's gonna stop me now. Nothing's gonna stop me now. Somehow, and nothing's stopping me now. Oh no. Oh, you little sleazy spread diseases in your infested beds. Always speaking, texting, tweeting, everything.